Non-oil activity in the UAE and Saudi picked up in August and European gas prices skyrocketed 30% today. You're watching The Daily Brief with Forbes. I'm Ramia Faraj. Non-oil private sector activity in the UAE and Saudi Arabia picked up in August despite growing concerns of a global economic slowdown. S&P's Purchasing Managers Index for August was 57.7, up from July's 56.3, indicating a 10-month high in its non-oil economy. The UAE's PMI went up to 56.7 in August, a rise from July's 55.4, signaling a robust improvement. Egypt's PMI reached 47.6 in August, up from 46.4 in July, however still below the 50 line, which separates growth from contraction. Aston Martin is raising around $660 million in a rights issue. It comes as major investors, including Saudi's public investment fund, keep faith with a struggling car maker. The rights issue is part of a previously announced equity raising worth about $752 million. It makes the PIF one of the luxury car maker's largest shareholders. Aston Martin says the fundraising will allow the company to lower its debt and invest in new models. Today's update didn't boost the share price, though, as the stock was down over 10% in midday trade. Liz Truss will be the next UK Prime Minister. The new leader of the Conservative Party has vowed to deliver a bold plan for the country centered on tax cuts and economic growth. The Foreign Secretary beat her rival, former Finance Minister Rishi Sunak, by 81,326 votes to 60,399 after a summer-long internal contest sparked by Boris Johnson's resignation in July. European gas prices rocketed 30% in early trade today as the continent scrambles to find alternatives to Russian gas before winter. Several countries have triggered emergency plans that could lead to energy rationing. Germany is working fast to open new gas import terminals, while Norway, a major European producer, is pumping more. Even so, experts say it could be hard for the region to find sufficient supplies when winter sets in. After raising interest rates for the first time in over a decade at their last meeting, European Central Bank policymakers are poised to deliver another big hike tomorrow in a bid to tame soaring inflation. Eurozone inflation hit 9.1% in August, a record in the history of the single currency and well above the 2% rate targeted by the ECB. It comes as the euro fell to a 20-year low against the dollar today, dropping below 99 cents as fears of a eurozone recession grow. In China, Beijing is accusing the U.S. of launching thousands of cyber attacks on the country and pilfering troves of sensitive data, including from a public research university. It's accusing the U.S. of infiltrating the Northwestern Polytechnical University in the city of Xi'an. The university specializes in aeronautical and space research. It alleges it infiltrated the university's networks and took control of tens of thousands of network devices, including servers, routers, and network switches. It says the units gained access to core technical data, including passwords. Let's take a look now at today's Forbes Real-Time Billionaires ranking. It tracks the daily ups and downs of the world's richest people. Our biggest loser today is Bernard Arnault, down $2.9 billion with net wealth of $153.6 billion. Our second biggest loser today is Gautam Adani, down $1.2 billion with net wealth of $145.3 billion. And our third place loser is Francois Betancourt Myers, down $1.2 billion with net wealth of $68.4 billion. Check out our website and our social media for all of the latest billionaires news. Oracle's chairman, chief technology officer and co-founder Larry Ellison has superseded Microsoft's Bill Gates to become the world's fifth richest billionaire. Ellison's net worth jumped by $1.5 billion since the release of the April billionaires list in 2022, reaching $107.5 billion. Gates's ranking fell by two spots to sixth place as he has donated $57 billion to the Gates Foundation, leaving him with $106.3 billion. Microsoft's share price has also declined 8.6% since March 11th. 
The most eagerly awaited historical event of the year in Venice has opened with a procession of 16th century boats along the Grand Canal. The Regatta Storica is one of the most spectacular and picturesque traditions of the city. The unique sport has been practiced in the Venetian Lagoon for thousands of years and today it's particularly well known for the spectacular historical water pageant that precedes the race. This is the Daily Brief. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.